so it's part two of today's webinar from CES App Nation 6 right here in Las Vegas. E. Emmett Brady, publisher of the App Resource Connect, and with all the ideas flying around, there's a lot of energy. It's kind of like a big stream of consciousness in the mobile app space. And my next guest on the webinar is a, an expert in the stream of media. This is Elliot Popple. He is the CEO of App.io, a company dedicated to the next wave of mobile streaming. So welcome to the App Resource Connect. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on, Elliot. So tell us a little bit about App.io's look into 2015. What you got coming down the pipe? Sure. So what App.io does is we stream mobile applications the same way that maybe Netflix streams movies or Spotify streams music. And what I mean by that is that rather than having to download an app before you can interact with it, we allow you to let end users or let internal developers really touch and feel and completely interact with the app with zero friction beforehand. Wow. It's, sort of, it's like the, the embodiment of the next wave of the cloud, I guess. Huh? Yeah. That's, that's what we think. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, how many different um, applications do you manage right now as a company? Is it just a proprietary app, or is there a whole suite of apps? Oh, we're, we're managing apps for multiple different companies um, all over the globe. Probably at this point, close to 20,000 different apps are on the wow. platform streaming. I think it's close to 1.5 million minutes of streamed content 1. per 5, month. 1.5, folks. Now, man, most people don't even understand streaming media, period. Streaming media on the web is, is old school. This is mobile streaming, and that's a real big innovation. What is the sweet spot for what you do? What is the biggest challenge in the app lifecycle that you solve? So for us, it's really not so much about app lifecycle. There's a lot of different use cases. So whether that's when a company is getting ready to launch and being able to show or, and let a, an end user potentially play with the app before they get there. Maybe it's ah, even before launch where nice. when companies are getting ready to, to update their app and launch a new one or they're, they're testing internally before they're prepared to launch, they don't want to push this to the app store. And things like Test Flight and Hockey App tend to be pretty clunky and require provisioning and, and versioning and UDIDs, things like that. Sure. With us, everything can be shared safe, secure, all in the private cloud um, without any, any really technical understanding uh, for the end user wow. or for the user uploading it. The lightest and fastest way to explore an app. That would be a nice way to put it? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think speed is really what we do best. That's, that's what really differentiates us. When yeah. you're streaming a movie or a song, Latency is built in, and latency is okay because that's a one-way stream. If if we're streaming, I don't know the the Monday Night Football game, and there's a 10-second delay, the only issue is if the neighbor's watching on cable and I hear them. <laughs> you cheer. hear the results ahead of time. But for when sure. you're streaming an app, it's we're talking. It's not the Monday Night Football game. It's streaming something like the the Madden app on my phone. Yeah. And I don't want to swipe to have the quarterback throw and then wait 10 seconds before sure. I see that happen. Sure. Um, the same goes for enterprise apps as well. You want that real-time interaction. And we're able to stream so fast that to the end user, it appears as if it's a native app running on your phone, but there was none of that headache of getting that app on the phone beforehand. So where you fit in the life cycle, of course, between the, the publisher and, and the user is that that sweet spot is is pretty much what uh, some of the biggest companies in the world are filling right now. You know, Salesforce fills that role with the marketing and sales, and now here you are filling that role with the streaming. So if you're sitting down with a new publisher or a new dev, what bit of advice would you give them uh, starting right from scratch? You know, I think it's really just getting your app in the customer's hands as early as possible. Um, and that's something that, that we've seen more and more users, um, as testing has grown as a use case for us, our customers have come to us and said, hey, how do we share this in a way where we can give this to a customer but be able to control what they can see, and then when we decide we want to change something, update it or, or pull it back so that they can no longer play with it. Um, and, and that's really where, where we're able to help and just being able to get customers insight early sure. without having it be a, a hectic or a, an annoying process yeah. is, is something that more, uh, we're finding more sailing, and more yeah. amusing. Exactly. Instead of pushing things up a hill, it's just sort of like, you know, pulling it along nicely. It's just simple. It's just, for the end user, it's just going to a website. Simple as that. Now, you told me that you joined CEO, uh, as a CEO this year for App.io. Give me some predictions for 2015. This is it right here at CES, folks. The first predictions, what do you see in mobile for 2015? I think you're going to see, uh, in general, I think beacons are going to be huge and payments are going to be huge. I think you're going to hear that from probably everyone you talk That's to. That's great, though. You're the first one uh, with a beacon. I'm going to follow this up. So maybe what we should do, Elliot, is have another interview with you some point, Q2, Q3, and see uh, how this is all panning out. What do you think? That sounds great to me. All right. So Elliot Popple, CEO of App.io, thanks for being on the App Resource Connect. Thanks for having me. We're going to keep rolling through the CES. Back for more.